Welcome viewers, Nick here once again with another projector review. Today's model is a full-size premium model called the L005 Android AOSP model. This model delivers premium features such as Android 10 TVOS operating system with access to Netflix and other premium streaming services. It has autofocus, Wi-Fi screen mirroring and Bluetooth audio. So up next you have my full review of its display quality and features and let's see what it has to offer. So don't click away just yet, you have that right after this. Welcome back, the L005 has a native resolution of 1080p. It has a brightness of 15,000 lumens or 700 anti-lumens. Its light source is LED and its display is LCD. It has contrast ratios of 43 and 16 to 9. It has 30,000 hours of LED lamp life. It has auto focus adjustment. It has dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth audio, and it comes with a Haku Mini Android 10 TVOS detachable TV box. So in the box, you get the projector itself. You get one HDMI cable, one AC power cable, one auxiliary cable, a lens cleaning kit, the Haku Mini detachable Android box, a micro HDMI to HDMI cable for the box, a micro USB charging cable for the box, a Bluetooth voice remote, a user manual for the Android box, and a user manual for the projector itself. So its design places it in the full size category. So it's a pretty large projector with a dimension of 11.81 inches wide by 9.65 inches long by 4.21 inches tall, weighing 6.94 pounds. The front contains a camera and sensor for the autofocus feature, an infrared sensor, and a cover for its glass coated lens. The back contains one HDMI input, one USB 2.0 port, one AV port, a headphone jack, a rear facing IR sensor, a manual vertical keystone adjustment lever, its AC power socket, a vent for its internal speaker, and another for the internal cooling fan. To the left contains a compartment that houses the included Android box, its intake vent and dust filter. On the opposite side is where you'll find its exhaust vent. At the top has press button controls with an LED power light. And to its base it has four anti-skid rubber feet, a screw type kickstand, a compartment for lens cleaning, and screw mounts located below each rubber foot for mounting to your ceiling. So to begin using this projector, there are two ways you can use it. You can use it without the Android box connected as a standard projector and connect your devices such as mobile phones, laptops and TV boxes via HDMI. Or you can connect the Android box and have a full Android TV operating system as a subsystem you can access from its main menu. So to install the Android box, you simply remove the cover. Connect the cables allocated. Secure it neatly into the compartment and replace the cover. The included remote works both ways. It works via infrared to control the basic features of the projector and it can connect via Bluetooth to the Android box and access features such as Google Assistant. So the first startup process includes a welcome splash screen and the option to select your language. At this point, you will be interrupted by the first autofocus adjustment for a few seconds. Then it will return to the language selection menu and once you select your language, you'll be taken to its main menu. So here I'm at 8 feet 2.4 meters from my projector screen and it produces a 67 inches display, but its optimal viewing distance according to its manual is 3 meters which produces a 90 inches display. However, it has a maximum viewing distance of 200 inches at a distance of 10 to 15 feet. So before I focus on the Android TV box subsystem, I'll quickly walk through its primary features. 
So its main menu has a very basic layout with icons to access media connected via its USB port and you also have a shortcut to the settings area. On the left panel, you can access its source inputs such as its HDMI port, AV port and its Android TV box subsystem once you install the box. The settings area however looks somewhat different and you have to scroll down to access the various menus. So starting from the top, you have picture mode. This is where you can choose from a selection of presets or use your own user brightness, contrast, color and sharpness. You have color temperature where the same applies. You can select from a number of presets or you can choose your own color temperature settings. Under aspect ratio, you have cropped display dimensions of 4 to 3 and 16 to 9 or you can set it to auto. It has a color range option where you can set it to full color range 0 to 255 ideal for PC type quality viewing or limited color range 16 to 235 ideal for watching movies or you can just set it to auto. Under mirror mode is where you will find its projection direction settings for front and rear projection upright or mounted to a ceiling. Next you have zoom settings. You can enable or disable the autofocus feature or you can adjust the focus manually using the direction pad on the remote. And if you find that the autofocus is not hitting the right focus, you can calibrate it and save your adjustments so the next time it initiates the autofocus it will get it right. One thing I notice is that there are no horizontal or corner keystone corrections only a vertical keystone lever. If you scroll down under sound settings, you can choose from a selection of presets or you can set your own treble and bass. You can adjust the sound balance and you can enable or disable the surround sound audio feature. The last section to the bottom is system settings where you can change its language. Reset to factory default settings. You have software updates via USB only and you can adjust the on-screen display timer. So before I move on to its Android subsystem, for those interested in watching photos in a loop that comes in handy at weddings, parties and even funerals, you simply insert your pen drive containing your images, browse to the folder and open the first image. The projector will then loop through all of the images in the said folder. So without the box connected, you don't get Bluetooth or Wi-Fi inside the main settings area as that's all available under the Android subsystem. Also, unlike a previous model where the TV box could not interface with the projector's USB port, that feature works perfectly in this model. So from the main menu on the left panel, scroll down and enter the Android TV subsystem. Alternatively, you can press the home button on the remote or the source button to select the Android TV source input. So when this is done for the first time, it will start with the Android TV OS first startup wizard, where you first have to pair the remote via Bluetooth, log in to your Wi-Fi network and your Google account. But keep in mind, this projector does not have an Ethernet LAN port. So this is the Android TV OS subsystem and if you head over to the about section in the settings area, here you can see it's running Android 10 TV OS version and here is its firmware build information with access to developer options. With this firmware, you get relevant features such as HD 1080p resolution up to 59.94Hz. HDMI CC options, Netflix ESN certification, surround sound audio options, 52 various languages to choose from, dual band Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth technology, built-in Chromecast and Google Assistance feature. So seeing that the box has its own hardware, let's take a look at its system and hardware information. 
so the manufacturer is SDMC and it's an Amalogic chipset with 2GB of RAM and 4.4GB of internal storage. If required, you have the ability to convert external storage via USB to shared internal storage. Its Bluetooth version is 5.0. Its CPU is the Amlogic S905Y2 and it's a quad-core Cortex A53 processor clocked at 1.8 GHz configured in 32-bit mode with support for only 32-bit apps and games. Its GPU is the Mali G31 with a refresh rate of 60 Hz with OpenGL ES version 3.2 support. As mentioned, it has dual-band Wi-Fi. Its operating system is Android 10 and it's not rooted. Its GPU has Vulkan API version 1.1 support. Under temperature, they disabled the temperature sensor. And on the codecs listed here are all of the decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos and videos with surround sound audio, such as Dolby Atmos, EAC3, and the DTS HD. There are, however, no Dolby Vision or AV1 decoders. And that's its system and hardware information. So with the L005, you have a certified version of Android TV OS with the required DRM level to play premium streaming movie services in HD. Here it shows that it has Google Widevine Level 1 with HDCP 2.2 protection. This is necessary because the box can be used independently outside of the projector with the included cables as a standard TV box. So here with its Netflix ESN certification, it can play movies in HD quality with spatial audio. And with Amazon Prime Video, you also get HD resolution with 5.1 surround sound audio. So this means you can install any of the other services such as Disney+, Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, and Sling TV, and they will all work in HD quality. For watching YouTube videos, you get up to 4K 2160p 60Hz quality with no HDR. However, the display is cropped into a 1080p viewport due to the limitation of the projector's max resolution of 1080p. For mobile screen mirroring, casting your mobile device is easy. The Android operating system does not come with Miracast or AirPlay, but it does have Google Assistant and built-in Chromecast. On your mobile phone, once you have the Google Home application installed and both your mobile phone and projector are connected to the same network, you simply open the Google Home application and the projector will be listed as a device to connect to under the name SMX4K. Once you select it, you can control its volume and you can click cast my screen to begin mirroring. As an alternative to the stock remote, you can plug any USB controller into its USB port and use it to navigate. That includes air mouse, gamepads, and keyboard and mouse. So I'll now play some 4K HDR videos that will be downscaled to 1080p. And this is a test of its optimal display quality and audio from its internal speaker.
answer would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico, but the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic of the Camp Nou and the Barcelona hymn being sung as referee Matteo Loff prizing presence on the bench as well. Atletico playing in yellow, Barca in uh, their... Tr So with the autofocus feature together with its bright lumens, it produces a very sharp high quality display with sharp edges and an evenly distributed focus without blurring to its edges. The audio from its internal speaker is very loud with lots of treble and bass, enough to fill a large room or office space. And for videos encoded with surround sound audio such as Dolby Atmos and DTS audio, you can play these videos successfully using the VLC player. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio... Those concerned about gaming and latency, here I'm playing a high graphics game with it connected to my gaming PC and I'm not experiencing any lag between using my gamepad and what's displayed through the projector. This car suits a drift driving style. Try to get the car sideways through the vents to maintain your speed. For benchmarking the box's performance, it got an Android to benchmark score of 64,828. For connecting to Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth headphones and audio receivers, you simply open the settings area under Remotes and Accessories, scan for your Bluetooth audio device and pair to it. Its fan noise from a distance of 1 meter registered 48 decibels, which is on the louder side in comparison to medium sized models, but it's expected seeing that it's such a large projector. So, in summary, I'm very satisfied with its display quality, audio, and features. The TV box integrates perfectly with the projector's hardware, allowing you to access its IO ports when connected. The TV box delivers Google certification and Netflix certification to stream movies in HD for major streaming platforms. The areas where I'm not satisfied are with the TV box's internal storage being only 4.4GB, this is insufficient if you would like to install additional apps and games, and there are no auto keystone or corner keystone corrections. And with that said, I've come to the end of this review. So if you are interested, just keep in mind it's a full-size model certified to play Netflix and others in HD and it has a very powerful internal speaker. It's currently being sold on Amazon for $249 with a $50 coupon reducing the price to $199 and you can get a further discount using my exclusive coupon provided in the description below this video. 
So give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation and would like to show your support. The link in the description is my affiliate link and if you would like to purchase or simply view it on Amazon, it goes a long way in providing the means for me to acquire new products for review. So go ahead and have a look and thanks in advance for using my link. So don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the notifications bell to be notified when I release new TV box videos or decide to do a giveaway. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video, stay tuned and see you in the next one.